Yes, I'm Daniel. I'm the president of the newly founded Open, European Open Source Academy since this year, where we try to highlight uh, and celebrate excellent European open source. Um, that's where I work. I work from home. I work on this little thing called Curl, right? Some of you have heard of it. Uh, it is an uh, internet transfer tool. I try to explain this to mortals sometimes, but it's hard. Uh, so anyway, it started a long time ago. It's a kind of a small project, uh, fairly big impact, right? So we started back in the 1996, roughly. 100 lines of code, now 180,000 lines of code, uh, roughly 1,400 authors. Um, we add new ones at the rate of about 10 every month or so. Um, so 20, 25 people are active, actively contributing code, committing things every month. 3,500 people have helped out. So quite a lot of people, a small team doing everything. I am the full-time employee here. One. Uh, I'll get back to that. So, okay. And it is an MIT like license. It's also relevant here because, yes, it's designed for maximum deployment and reach, right? But maybe not designed maximum for other things. It's in a few things. Uh, basically, everything that connects to the internet every once in a while run curl, right? So, it's cars, every phone, tablet, games, game consoles, servers desktop operating systems, landers on Mars, medical devices, printers, you know, the lot. And um, really, it's more of a sign of modern, uh, modern ways of doing things, right? Everything we do is built on loads and loads of open source. We do things like this. We do some custom stuff, and everything beneath is open source. Um, more like this, even though this is a flawed analogy. Everyone will tell me that icebergs don't float like this. But uh, a lot of open source underneath. We show something on top. Or more like this, perhaps. <laughs> There's something that is not open source, and that's a lot of open source. Um, so, and, and you can't talk about open source in the wild, of course, without bringing up 2347. And I'm not saying that I'm from Nebraska because I have this funny accent because I'm from Sweden. Uh, but there is a lot of people who, and a lot of projects, a lot of open source that would identify with this little piece down there, right? And for some reason, I fell over an excellent example just to highlight how it could be if I had been in Nebraska. I want to show you how it could work like. I <laughs> Curl runs in these cars. 47 car brands. I mean, that's basically every car that is made today. Uh, and I, then I sort of went through this list and I made the second slide. Who of these are helping out in the project? <laughs> and it's, it's not a reload problem. <laughs> I, I don't want to name names really, but it's more of a symptom here, right? Uh, biting the hand that doesn't feed me, as we say. <laughs> and why do, do they do this? Well, of course, they're entitled to, because we gave it away. I gave it away. It's free. There's nothing bad. There's, sort of, there's no legal problem here. I gave it away. They're using it. They're fully entitled to. I try to remind these companies sometimes that they could possibly think about their own future, right? Help out so that we can survive until tomorrow. But surely someone else will pay. So. We won't. Anyway, that's me. So I'm still the full-time employee. Those 20, 40 billion installations. Yes. And open source is often, of course, the better alternative here. We've heard everyone talk about it this morning. Open source survives. It's often really excellent. It's the better alternative. And all those commercial offers, they would have done it themselves otherwise if they could. But open source is the better way. So we do it open source. And maintaining open source is tough. Seen across the world, open source projects are usually, I mean, the median number of maintainers is one, right? It's often a spare time hobby. It's often underfunded. We're often, you know, we have a lot of things to do, and burnout is sort of a, a real issue for us as a collective. There are somewhere around 11 million packages, open source projects. And 
millions of open source developers. So there's a lot of us. And maintaining is a lot of things, right? I tend to say that I, I, I do a lot of things as a maintainer. And, and in a small project, most of these tasks are mine because I'm the only uh, full-time employee, right? So I cannot fully depend on someone else uh, at all times. And sometimes I even do feature development, right? Um, so in this project then, 20, 40 billion installations, we also, of course, have those manufacturers or car manufacturers, you know, known brands, well-known companies, or as we can call them, the giants, right? They, they're out there, surely. I mean, they, they use this stuff a lot. And they help out by sending us their customers, right? Because if, <laughs> if someone has a problem with their product, I mean, who could ask them to take care of their own customers? No, no, come to us, we'll help you. No charge. Um, that's fine. Uh, or you might you want to go, you know, have a lander on a different planet. Then you need to get a lot of information, of course. And then you send these. But we got five days to respond, sort of, on these silly forms that they send us. And of course, if they find another vulnerable component somewhere in the universe, they will also email every open source project in the world. Did you use log4j in your project? <laughs> I mean. Everything I write is in C, right? So there was far away from anything Java. But sure, uh, in this case, we got 24 hours, I think, to respond. <laughs> so yeah, they help out by sort of overloading us with crap. Uh, US Department of Energy can also send these kind of weird things. What do you want from me? Uh, I usually these days tend to ask them to sign up for a support contract, and then they never respond again. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm really a believer and a fan of, and a fan of the new European CRA uh, legislation that is sort of coming. And then they uh, email us about that too, right? So, sure. And in this case, I think I got a week to respond or something. Um, of course, it's sort of a little bit of an educational thing for us to, to teach them what's the better way to do things are and how to behave. But anyway, it's really, so this meme is sort of really, sometimes it feels like this. Um. <laughs> but, okay, not everyone is a, one of these uh, uneducated giants, right? We have users as well, and they can also help out sort of in their own special way to, <laughs> to, uh, to make it a dream. <laughs> to do open source. <laughs> well, in this particular case, it's actually, I think it's the worst I've ever had, but it's sort of, it, it took a toll. Anyway, but I think in general, users are really fun. And since these giants, they really go out of their way to be unapproachable, right? So when someone finds uh, my email address in their car and they have a problem, why not email me? Right? Because. <laughs> I can certainly help out with multimedia in Toyotas, or why not sort of point of interest in Ford? Just, just contact me. And, and um, prob <laughs> I, you know, often I don't really even understand what they're talking about. I have to Google what, the, what, are, what are they talking about. <laughs> and I really, it's impossible to respond because the distance between me and, and the person in the other end. <coughs> so yeah, and, but, but of course, not only stupid things. I, I get a lot of appreciation. So I mean, of course, being, being an open source maintainer and, and, and doing things like this on this scale and for this time, um, because it never ends, right? Even though my wife tends to ask me, is it ever done? Uh, so. It, it, the, the contact with the community and all the humans and the people involved, I think that's one of the things that actually makes me think this is the best thing to do and work with. And sometimes we even have these kinds of fun users. So this is actually more of a, you know, ugly comment on my blog about what I do. I made a sort of this sarcastic cross-stitch pattern out of it, and the user made a pillow out of it. <laughs> It's just a hobby. Uh, anyway, um, so another way then that users are helping out 
And, and back to what Jim mentioned a while ago. So it works like this, you know. So these days AI is a really fun tool, right? So you just ask the uh, AI, can you find a problem in curl, uh, make it sound really terrible, and I can send it to the curl project? And we all do that, right? The entire world can do that. It's really easy. There's no friction. It, it gives you answers really fast. They're never right. Uh, and just a lot of talk. A lot of apologizing, m dashes, bullet points, mixed case, but, and, and typically also very long, right? So you can get one of these uh, bug reports or security vulnerability reports. There are 300 lines of text. It takes time to debunk and go through. It really ends up like one of these uh, distributed attacks kind of on the project as a whole because it becomes a serious burden. And uh, it's not really a new thing that people are sort of, there's X amount of people being just annoying and bad and everything. But nowadays we have sort of a helping hand in the tools that enables even more people. And a lot of these people, they actually think they're helping out. Hey, I'll help out the project by looking for some problems on their behalf. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, in order to populate that machine that generates all those AI answers, there's AI crawlers, right? So on the, just, you know, the curl website is a stupid fit static site with just some information, but we serve 65 terabytes of data per month, hammered 4,000 requests per second, and only, only a tiny, tiny fraction of that is actual downloads. Yeah. Thankfully, we have sponsors that sort of eat all that bandwidth, so don't, we don't really have a, a big problem with that. Just strange. Anyway, so I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I may come off as sounding negative here, but I just wanted to show you some of the struggles, problems, everyday scenarios that are happening. I'm actually really positive, and uh, I think that uh, open source has come this way, and I think we're only going to see open source grow stronger and do even more in the future because of everything like this. And uh, I'm happy to be involved in the European Open Source Academy to make sure that we highlight even more sort of uh, open source this way. Um, and really, uh, what, again, back to uh, facing and talking to users and humans as one of the both bad, worst ends and stuff and the best things in a project. I have this email I wanted to sort of just top it all off that I got a while ago. Uh, and this sort of, this email made, it warms your heart, right? And sort of there's hope for the future when the 11-year-old kid emails that email. And so, <laughs> there's future for open source. So that's what I, all I wanted to say today. Thank you.